Now, for what's tipping the scales of justice, Melody Ferris waiting to learn her fate as the jury is set to resume its deliberations this morning in the Burn Powell murder trial. Now, good morning. Happy Halloween. I think the uh, prosecutors are going to find out they're going to get a trick or a treat today. And I agree with you. This is a tough case for the prosecutor. Obviously, the defense did not take a plea in this case because they saw that reasonable doubt. and They thought there was enough there to take the chance to go forward with trial. I think that the defense attorney did a great job of placing that blame on Scott. And also, these bags were really interesting. Him trying to pull these bags, he's a 185-pound man trying to drag these bags. The only thing, and I hate to Monday morning quarterback this, I'd have loved to have seen him actually get a 300-pound replica body because I think that's even harder to drag than those two bags where he could get a good grip dead weight of a body is just one of the hardest things to move. I think anybody that's ever tried to help somebody up uh, knows that. So I think the defense may have it here. I think that the, the jury's going to say, we just don't have enough connecting Melody to this to this murder. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love what you said there, Randolph, about the, 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 the body, yes, and how this could have been done. I, I want to dive into that with you both. Let's go back. For anybody who might have missed it, the defense team created quite a moment in close when they brought in bags of fertilizer. Uh, the defense attorney stacked them up and, and was trying to pull them to demonstrate for the jury that he couldn't do it. You know, if you snooze, you lose, and then this stuff comes in. That's right. You know, if you're not on your game, if you're not paying attention and you're not objecting to these things, the judge just lets it in and the jury gets to see it. So I agree with you. The defense did a great job there. You know, I, this whole dragging of the body and where he was shot, you know, this would be a big question in my mind if I was a juror, because I don't know that the state or maybe the state pigeonholed themselves in putting him in the house, which required that dragging. Maybe there's another concept, maybe there's another theory, but they certainly put themselves there that gave the defense this ability to say she couldn't have dragged him this far. Yeah, I want to get both of your thoughts on all of this and what is jumping out to you as we watch Sophia Koval uh, in her dad before the judge. Uh, Randolph, would you start us off, please? Certainly, you know, this is just such a sad situation because you have, and I say sad in the sense that there's multiple lives ruined here, right? Sophia's obviously 14. She's going to spend the next three years in a detention center. Um, probably she may even face deportation when she's released. That's going to turn the family over. Who knows what that will bring? There's the portion of her mother not being there. That's got to be tough on her. I've got a 13-year-old daughter, so I know exactly what you know, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds go through. It's a very tough time in a girl's life. Um, and then to have her father there and to say my mother was so beautiful and wonderful, and I heard, heard him say that she was born in France during the German occupation. I mean, the, the things that she has seen and gone through and survived and to come back into the, or to come to the United States and ultimately have her granddaughter take her life, is just it's just all around a sad situation. I really feel for this family because this is not going to be the end. This will go on for, for many years in terms of, healing and trying to resolve this within the family. You're absolutely right, Randolph. Perfect point to, uh, to end the show, and thank you so much for that. Randolph Rice, thanks to you as well. Pleasure having you both on this program. We'll see you soon.